Hi folks, Josh Wolf with Wolf Vintage Watches here. Welcome to my shop. In this video, we're going to take a look at a Hamilton Sea Rover 2 from 1962. Let's get into it. If you're new here and are into vintage watches, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. And if you dig this video, please give the like button a click. Okay, let's take a look at some of the basic specs of the 1962 Sea Rover 2. The watch is 33 millimeters wide, excluding the crown. It's just about 40 millimeters tip to tip. It is just over 8.5 millimeters thick to the top of the domed acrylic crystal, and the lug width is 17.5 millimeters. The Sea Rover 2 has a single piece stainless steel case, and the crown is signed. The movement is a Swiss made, manual wind Hamilton caliber 688. The bezel of this case is relatively thin and has a high polish. Having a smaller bezel means that the dial really is the focus of the watch and makes it look a lot larger than the 33 millimeters that it is on paper. There are small grooves where the lugs meet the case. It's just enough of a detail to give the front of the case some interest and shadow lines to break up the look of the bezel. The signed crown is ever so slightly countersunk into the case sides and is original to the watch. Because this is a front loading watch, meaning that the movement is removed through the crystal, it has a two piece stem. It's not uncommon to come across Sea Rovers or watches with two piece stems in general that are missing the crown. This makes things doubly difficult because now a crown and the male half of a stem will need to be sourced to complete the restoration of the watch. The case back is fairly unremarkable, which is a good thing. On this example, there are no major scratches or dings. In fact, some of the factory circular brushing could still be seen. Having a flat case back, it's also not uncommon to find Sea Rover 2s that have been engraved. I actually enjoy monogram case backs. It's a tangible reminder of the era the watch is from and that the original owner received the watch after a personal milestone in their lives. The original silver dial on this example is in excellent condition. There is very little patina that is mostly covered up by the case and the crystal near the crown. The dial has an awesome sunburst finish, another subtlety that adds to the overall aesthetics of the watch. The evens are painted numerals and the odd hour markers are applied silver toned batons. Continuing with the minute details that can be missed after a casual glance, the applied batons have a V shaped groove running down the center. While this groove is not obvious, it does reflect the light, adding a bit of sparkle. Combined with the sunburst silver dial, these markers really brighten up the look of the Sea Rover 2. The minute track markers are painted on a record grooved outer track. This grooved outer track gives a matte look when viewed at arm's length, creating a clear delineation from the sunburst inner field. I've seen at least two different styles of hands on the Sea Rover 2, both of them original from the factory. Maybe this was Hamilton's way of A-B testing which hand styles the market preferred. The handset on this watch has very light patina. The iconic Hamilton H logo and branding are painted on. Like the minute track paint and the Swiss at the 6 o'clock, the paint is in excellent condition. I typically like to put Sea Rover 2s on black leather straps. However, a potential customer asked what the watch would look like on a brown leather strap. I have to say I was surprised how much I liked it on brown. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you prefer the black or the brown strap. Shall I gush as much as I normally do at how great acrylic crystals are? Should I insert some macro shots of that sweet distortion of light at an angle? I don't think I need to repeat again how easy it is to give the crystal a quick polish when it picks up a scratch here and there, since I've said it too many times already. How about I just say that the low domed acrylic crystal tops off our look at the outside of the watch and move on to talking about the movement. The movement in the Sea Rover 2 is a Hamilton caliber 688 which is based on the ETA 2391. It is a manual wind caliber with center sweep seconds. It is a very thin movement as can probably be deduced by the very thin case of the Sea Rover 2. Being a Swiss made movement, you would be correct in assuming it is shock protected. The type of balance shocks used in this caliber are Kif shocks, specifically the Flector design. These differ from the more common Inca block shocks in their design. These Kif shocks are clover shaped and spin inside their settings to open or close. Inca block shocks and later Kif design variations use arms that clip into place rather than rotate. Check out the link in the description for an excellent post with amazing macro shots of the two types of shock absorbing systems. If you'd like to see me open up the Kif shocks, be sure to subscribe. I'll be posting a video of the service I performed on this movement soon. 
To see the 1962 Sea Rover 2 and many other watches I have for sale, head on over to wolfvintagewatches.com. Link is in the description below. Click the playlist on the left to check out my reviews of other vintage watches. If you'd like to help feed the YouTube algorithm, check out whatever video Google's AI is suggesting for you on the right. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe, like the video if you liked it, and leave your comments and questions below. See you next time. Bye.